I need you to come and see your world by yourself, by yourself. message that brought me let me just do a prologue of myself an introduction of my calling and I'm going to be doing that from the scripture the Bible said in proverb open rebuke is better than secret love better is a wound of a friend than the kiss of an enemy in John chapter 1 verse 4 John to the seven churches which are in Asia John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, he was not just sent to sinners, he was not just sent to ignoramus, but he was sent to the seven churches in Asia. The seven churches in Asia were known by the people in Asia. Even the people who were not living in Asia were aware of those churches. So, he began to pass the message to them who were in the churches. These are born again. These are ignoramus and these are pastors, shepherds, prophets. They all were in the churches and yet John was sent to them. Now why did God send John to the churches? It is because the shepherds, the prophets, the pastors who are in the churches could no longer harness or bridle the affairs of the church. They could no longer manage it. It's went beyond their control they began to fail omit and agitate the spirit of god so god needed a man who have been sanctified who have been taught and who have been truly purged to do this job he chose john the beloved who later became john the patmos the bible said this john was with the disciples 
of Jesus at the initial stage. But at the point, Jesus told them how they are going to die. And Peter said, what about this man? And Jesus said to them, if I tell you that he will tarry until the Son of Man come, what is it to you? In other words, he was trying to convey a very profound message to Peter that this man will have an encounter with the Lord, which from that very moment, he will begin to minister to the churches. In Asia but this revelation was not made known to Peter so they thought that he was talking about him not dying him not seeing death so they went about spreading and speculating the rumor that Jesus said that this man is not going to die and the Bible made it clear that Jesus never said so he only said what is it to you if I say that he will not die until the Son of Man comes now the Son of Man came to him in the land of Patmos, and began to reveal to him what the Father has revealed to him by the hand of his angel and John began to minister to the church. Now what am I trying to tell you? There are people who God has given this extraordinary ministry to minister to the churches. Most people are sent to sinners. Most people are sent to babies. Most people are sent to foolish people, people who need to be educated spiritually. But there are people who God has given an exceptional anointing, an exceptional oil to minister to the churches. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, starting from 9, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heading and they unto the circumcision. Now, what does it mean? It means naturally the Jews were not allowed to minister to the Gentiles. They counted them to be what? Unclean people. But when Barnabas and Paul started ministering to them, there was controversy. There was contention and dissension between, among them. And at the point, they came to a conclusion by the help of the Holy Spirit through Peter that Paul should go. Why? Because one time, Peter was sent to go and teach the Gentiles in the house of Colenius. And from his encounter with the Lord, he knew that God has also granted mercy and grace towards the Gentiles. So, they now gave glory to God who had also what? Giving redemption to the Gentiles. At first, they said, salvation is of the Jews. But later, it extended to the Gentiles. And it was Paul who God gave that ministry to. Peter just went there. God allowed Peter to go so because he knew at a time, at a point, Paul will face the Jews in such a way that it might eradicate or stop the journey. Or the assignment which God has given to Paul. So he prepared Peter for the future. That is why he sent Peter. Peter was an apostle for the Jews, not for the Gentiles. But Paul was given the ministry to minister toward the Gentiles. But he was first sent there for the sake of what? The future. So when Peter spoke, they allowed Paul and they gave glory to God. Now when they saw the grace that was upon Paul, they gave him the hands of fellowship, the right hands of fellowship, that they should go unto the heading and unto the circumcision. In other words, it was an exceptional grace given to Paul and Barnabas to minister to the heading, to the Gentiles, which others did not what have. Now, what is my point? Every ministry are not the same. The Bible says one spirit, but different administration, different operation. We are gifted distinctly. You must understand your calling and function there. Jesus said, I do not do my will, but the will of my Father. Your ministry is the will of the Father for you, not the will of men for you. So you must not allow men to confront you and teach you what to do. In verse 10, only the wood that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. This is verse 11, Galatians 2 verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Paul corrected Peter because he was to be blamed. He didn't just correct him openly. He also wrote it and sent it to the churches. It was made known. It was a public matter. 
That's what the Bible said. Better is a wound of a friend than the kiss of an enemy. Open rebuke is better than sacred love. Ministry is light. Light is not darkness. The Bible said, do men own candle and put it under the bush? Eh? So the word of God is a light. Is a rebuke. It's a reprimand. That is what the Bible said. The scriptures are by the inspiration of God. Profitable for what? Doctrine. Rebuke. Reprimand. ETC. So you must understand that there are people who God has given the oil to rebuke the wrong affairs of the church. To reprimand. To address issues. In verse 12 of this Galatians 2. For before that... Certain came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So Paul began to rebuke Peter for hypocrisy. Peter was the chiefest of the apostles. Paul was the least, but he rebuked him. And Peter was humbled. As a matter of fact, the Lord gave me a trance of what actually happened there. Paul spoke to him rudely. Because he was under the influence of the Holy Spirit addressing issue. And Peter was humble enough to take the correction. But we have pastors who will never listen to people who they feel that they are more than hierarchically. God has sent me with this spirit to address issues in the church. Where Peter and others stopped, John the Beloved continued. He ascended to another level, another dimension of ministry. The first ministry that was originally given to them was to go to the Lordship of Israel, minister salvation to them and bring them back. That is the general ministry committed to many and people are flowing on it. But there are people who God has given a secondary ministry. And this secondary ministry is to address the issue in the church. There are diversities of ministry. The Lord said to me that Pastor Ebe Damina is preaching his last heresy. Pastor Ebe Damina is preaching his last heresy. I don't know how long you are going to do this, but that's the word of the Lord for you. I've been listening to you. I've been seeing your heretical teachings. And I must be sincere, lucid, and candid enough to admit that some of your messages are true. Some of the correction you do are true. Some of the reprimand you do are very correct and proper. And I like your courage because you don't look at people's face when you want to address issue. But there are things you are teaching in the body of Christ that is provoking the spirit of God and you are fighting the ministry of Jesus. And God said I should tell you that you are preaching, you are teaching your last heresy. So it is better you trace your step back and ameliorate. Work on yourself so you won't die piloting people to hell. Hear ye the word of the Lord. The facts I have not called your name as a minister does not mean that you are free. I must not do everything at the same time, step by step. As the Lord reveals your issue, your matter to me, I come out to minister there. There are a lot of blunders going on in the church. And I am out, I am anointed and ordained to address them. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for you, Ebe Damina. And one of the message I will be correcting now, because there are a lot of heresy there, but I just want to touch one. Because there are people listening to this blunder, and if we don't come out to correct this error, they will go astray. Because people come with so much proof hypocritically cogent enough, profound enough to bemuse men. I not convince men. 
they, they confuse and not conveys. Because conviction will bring salvation. But confusion will bring destruction and delusion. You came and told people that Titan is an Old, Test- Old, Old Testament story. Who told you so? Who told you so? And some people adopt the revelation and the idea. Now, I know there are people who are abusing Titan. They don't teach it the way they're supposed to teach it. They, 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 they rob people through Titan. They amplify it. They capitalize on it at the detriment of salvation. But don't you ever say it's an Old Testament. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the law, but to fulfill it. He said there is no part of the law that will be left untouched. He said every part of it must be fulfilled. So what makes you think there is an old version? Why do you differentiate the New and the Old Testament? They are the same thing. The difference is that men handle the law in wickedness, in weakness, and Jesus came to teach them the way it should be. Paul said, even nature teaches us because men refuse to be taught by nature, by conscience. That is why the law was introduced by God through Moses. When the law could no longer prevail, penetrate and saturate the sons and the daughters of men because wickedness increased in their hearts, grace and truth came in. It's the same goal. God said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change it not. So what makes you think that his word has changed? Or his word can be changed? Jesus never spoke against Moses. And Moses never spoke against Jesus. And that is why Jesus told them that if he believe in Moses, then you would have believed in me also. For Moses spoke of me. So you see that the man who brought the law saw ahead, knew ahead knew what was going to come after him. So everything they did was in alignment. It was the people that had issue with the law, not the law having issue on its own. Bring ye your tithes, that there may be meat in my house. He gave a reason, that there may be provision, not for robbery and corruption. So you can't change it. Stop confusing people with stupid proofs. Hear ye the words of the wise. He that has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The same Spirit that spoke to the churches in Asia is still speaking to the churches in Africa. The same Spirit is still speaking to the churches in America. Churches in all over the world. Hear ye the word of the Lord. God is not against tithing. He's never against tithing. He's against the wrong abuse. He asked a question, can a man rob God? But he have robbed me. And they said, where have we robbed you? He said, in tithe and offering. If you are against tithing, then why then are you allowing offering? You should abort offering also with those heretical scriptures you are quoting. Is that in tithe and offering? There is a conjunction there. In tithe and offering, the conjunction unites both of them. They can't do without each other. In tithe and offering. So the grace Jesus brought came to permit you to rob God. Is that what you are saying? Romans chapter 6. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer? 
the Bible said, what the Lord could not do, in that it was weak in the flesh, God sent his son to crucify sin in the flesh. There was an assignment committed to the Lord to carry out. The Lord could not do it because the wickedness men possessed was stronger than the Lord. And God sent the son for that very purpose. So you can't, you can't teach men. That Jesus came to do something else that is different from the law. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title in shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore, verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Do you hear that? The law. Verse 27, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? The Pharisees knew the law. They taught the law, but they never touched it. They never kept it. But the kind of Pharisees we have in our generation don't even preach the law. They use grace message to abuse the law. To reduce the law. To a muscle of bread. The Bible said, if you don't teach me, you will be the least. Many of you think by teaching this kind of all this kind of message, you become, you'll be recognized as one of the most knowledgeable and sophisticated pastors, not knowing that in the sight of God you are the least. Let no man deceive you. Pay your tithes. But sow it to the right man of God. Pay it in the right place. Not to criminals. That there may be food, provision, meat in my house. There are a lot of necessity, prerequisites that need to be met. A lot of demand in the church. Many of you started. Then as soon as you acquired everything, you start teaching nonsense. What about the ministers who are not yet blessed, who are still coming? How will they survive it? There are people who God has given full-time ministry. Not all men of God are into half time. Some of you are doing business, doing ministry at the same time. Is that how God orchestrated it from the beginning? He said, the priest shall do no work, but the Lord their God shall be their possession. Whatsoever that is given to God, the priest and his family shall eat. Study your Bible very well. Paul said in the New Testament now, because you may say I'm quoting the Old Testament, Old Testament according to your stupid ideology and philosophy. Paul said in the New Testament that if we minister spiritualities unto you, is it a great thing if we reap your carnatis? He said, he that ministered on the altar shall eat the fruit of the altar. He that preached the gospel shall live of the gospel. That is how God devised it. That is the formation. So you can't bring your evil information to deform it. A lot of deformation in the church because of heretic teachings. What you did not teach from the beginning, why are you teaching it now? Now you you you, you are you are exposed, you are now knowledgeable, so you, you push them away. Tomorrow you will still wake up to discover that some of the things you are teaching now, you are teaching now, they are false also. It means you're unstable as water, and it's a cause to be unstable as water because that was the cause that Jacob placed on one of his sons. Thou shall be unstable as water. Any man of God that has been taught, that have been, that have been established by God in his word on top of the rock can never be moved. What you believe is what you believe. David said, I said, 
I shall never be moved in my prosperity. There is a tradition given to us, even though we, we, we have been blessed massively, we are not to change from it. It's our lifestyle. 